Well, in the heat of the Hertzman attacks and abductions in the country, a young man has risked his life to create a film village in a forest in Ibadan. There he is mentoring thousands of Nigerian youths in the film and arts for free. The story of Aurel Fair Williams, founder of the City of Talents, is the second in a series of special reports from Ibadan after the intriguing story of Adigun, the baby encyclopedia of Yoruba proverbs. Ola Awakon journeyed to the forest at Arakbaja to hear the survival story. <laughs> Ibadan, a city set on a hill of rich history and a people proud of their past as well as an evolving present. Ibadan, it is also the largest city in West Africa that boasts a well-documented romance with artistic development in Nigeria. In fact, Ibadan sits unchallenged as the cradle of modern African literature and cultural enterprise dating back to the middle of the 20th century when the Mbari Club founded by Ulrich Bear helped to midwife the emergence of legends such as Chinwe Achebe and Wale Shoinka. Even so, the city is clearly far from being done. Now, Uri of a Williams. Aye, your cabino. At the time I was heading to Arakbaja, none of these had struck my mind in this unusual way about this unusual place. Ori Ofe, the Ososa born filmmaker and theatre scholar, may be blessed for sharing the same ancestral hometown with the doyen of Nigerian theatre, the late Hubert Ogundi, and may have drawn sufficient inspiration from the master for his own crafts. But this level of daring, of braving the current wave of insecurity in the land to site and run a film village in the forest is a feat that is probably only possible to someone who enjoys grace, such as is the meaning of his name, Oriofe, in the Yoruba language. This place was a thick forest many years back, but the vision of a young Nigerian to build a film village here has had a multiplier effect on more than 30,000 young Nigerians who have been mentored for free in their various fields of endeavor. Love for the theater for him started as a form of therapy. One day, I was just playing with a cousin of mine. We were just throwing tank drums. And then uh, she said, um, your mother is dead. I mean, the person you call your mom is actually your grandmother. I was shocked to hear that. So let's cut the long story short. I asked for my grandmother and I found out that she was actually my grandmother and my mom had been dead since. So I was worried, disturbed, pained and all that. So drama became some kind of therapy. It became what we call escapism in literature. And then I would lock myself in a room and I would start writing. Uri of a. Williams, who is regarded by most lovers of his form of art as a controversial faith-based movie maker, is popularly known for its unique coinage of titles and use of secular actors in propagating the gospel of Christ. When you hear angels taking bribe, a casket for God, February 30, pastors on strike as titles, do not search further. Mr. Williams is at work. I would jokingly say, if Jesus were to be a filmmaker today, Jesus himself will use secular actors. <laughs> then you ask me why, you know. I will tell you why. Jesus will use secular actors. When Jesus called Peter, Peter was not born again. When he called um, Andrew, was not born again. When he called Matthew, they were all sinners. When you read, you are able to put words together. I will Jesu, pastors by emergency, a holiday in hell, recession in heaven, we just did one now, a casket for God. I've received calls that which one is a casket? You don't even fear God anymore. You know? <laughs> uh, God of the bad guys. But why a film village in a forest? Those days we used to do rehearsals in uh, secondary schools. We do secondary and I would look around and say, if only I could have a place like this, where people can do rehearsals. But I didn't have the capacity then. But that was on my mind. I caught that vision since I was in another level. I saw headsmen with their cattle right beside the film village. 
in any other place, this could easily pass for a recipe for conflict. Can you tell us those challenges that you faced while coming up with this or starting this vision of having a film village? And there was a time one man just came, a thief, a robber. Robbers used to disturb this environment, you know, it's a quiet place. And then he struck the door and just said, bring your phone, pastor. Pastor, bring your phone. The first mistake he made was that I'm not a pastor. That was, that was the first mistake. I was in that room around 1 a.m. with somebody. We were working on the system. We were working. And then, bring my phone. A phone of 40,000 naira. And if I can, if I'm sure of what I'm saying, all you have is a cutlass of 1,500 naira. That is cheating. You know, <laughs> you can't use 1,500 to get 40,000. That is an aberration. That would be stupid of me. You understand? We can do man to man right now. You know, we'll just punch man to man. The guy beside me didn't believe it. I went to the bathroom, came out, and I hit him with, you know, the door net had no lock. The, the carpenter did a very bad job. But it was that day, I, I thank God for the, the bad job he did, you know. I struck him, he went down, and we started fighting on the grass. We fought and fought and fought and fought. We hit me and we hit him, you, you are a demon and all that. We would have caught him, but the other guy was... <laughs> was scared, was confused, you know, they call me bishop, how can a bishop be fighting? <laughs> this is one I must fight to, because if I don't, it will not only collect the phones, it will collect the laptop. I can be scared if you hold a gun, and I'm sure you are holding a gun, but not, a, not even, a, a, a knife is more dangerous than a cutlass, a blade is more dangerous, so I was calculating. Once I hit you and the cutlass is gone, we finish everything there. But while he was doing that, I didn't know the guy was trying to run away. So that was how I handled that. Then there was a time some headsmen would come here. I mean, our studio almost got burnt down. This one we are building again. Got burnt down, went to Ogun State. We are faced a lot here anyway. We went to Ogun State to shoot a film. And then uh, I was told that some headsmen came around, burnt the bush. And then mistakenly, I know they didn't do it intentionally, but mistakenly they raced down the studio. And all the facilities, all our equipment, computer, a generator, millions of naira. That was 2019. Everything went into flames. Can I, use the I came in at a time that hundreds of trainees across the country, especially students, who usually converge on this film village to acquire knowledge about theatre practice as well as to receive mentorship for free, we are not around. But the few I met displayed at the point of rehearsals. In school, I did not do theatre, I did <laughs> biochemistry. And I just, <laughs> it doesn't even go together. So there's no connection. But when I came here, like, now even if I'm talking now, you don't, you can never say, I did not do um, theatre. Art or anything that has to do with media or theatre in school. So, and I learned everything here at the City of Talent. I was privileged to actually play the lead role of the film titled The Salvation of Satan. So, um, while we were still planning the film, he said, is there anyone who can follow, like who can just volunteer to follow him to his film village and type the script of that film? And me, I just volunteered. And from there, there and then, from, right from the campus, I, right from the church rather. I didn't even go home to pick anything. I followed him in his car to Ibado and he brought me here at night. Jeez, it was an experience I could, I, I can never forget. When I came, it was just himself, myself, and the person that drove us that was around. Then he went to his studio. I was in the hall. There was no service, there was no network, there was nothing. I couldn't reach people, so I was, I was not really afraid, but I knew people outside would have been like, where is this guy? His number was not going through. That was how I came and I found, I got to the City of Talent. I am today an editor, a film editor, um, a cinematographer, and in general, a filmmaker. And in terms of filming and what I do as a career now, I learned majorly here at the City of Talent. As I moved around the film village, one unique feature here is the fact that many celebrities are being immortalized. How? These footprints explain it all. I felt that there are people who have served in the industry, music and movies, so we bring them here during the festival and we take their footprints here. And this is the only place, this is the only place you can find this in the whole of the country. This is Oguma Jek, Alaji, 
um, Oguma Jack, Yoruba actor, uh, who is now, Bola Gade Akipelu is now uh, late. So blessed memory. So when he was alive, uh, he came here for this footprint. This is the footprint now. You know, there will be a time people will get old and they will go. So people can now, can come here now to see the footprint of Oguma Jack. Uh, even though you can't see him again, we have the footprint here at the City of Talents. We have Mr. Latin here. This is Bolaji Amushan's footprint, Mr. Latin. is um, the president of Tampan. We have the former president, Dili Udile, here. We have uh, Yemisho Demu here. We have Pedro Gomola. So it's a beautiful place to have here. The presence of this film village has brought development to the community. Every year, the venue hosts Nollywood actors, gospel artists and filmmakers at its festival of talent. This woman who sells on this road to the film village buttresses the fact that the existence of the city of talent is helping the community develop at a faster pace. We were be by that I also met with this art collector and culture enthusiast based in Ibadan. Mr. Tunde Odunlade lauds the ingenuity of the founder of the City of Talent, whose commendable initiative is yet to receive support from the government. He owns up that many of such talents are bound in Ibadan. I'm not surprised when I see that young man creating such, you know, an edifice right in the middle of the forest. And was there salvaging it by himself. You know, he's had several encounters with, uh, you know, attackers, you know. But he says, this is where I've come to stay. And I'm going to stay here. And I know the benefit they are in for the people of Ibadan, for the people of uh, Oyo State, for the people of Nigeria, and if you like, for the entire globe. <laughs> Playwright, author, motivational speaker, and faith based filmmaker Oriofel Williams is not just a worthy successor to illustrious literary and artistic forebears in Nigeria, he has blazed a new path to fresh frontiers. He has made drama the imitation of life, an imitation of nature, and by so doing, drawn the world outside into his world in the forest. His story may just be the fulfillment of the saying by American philosopher Ralph Waldo Emerson that if a man built a better mouse trap, the world will beat a path to his door no matter where it is located. Ola Awakon, TVC News, Ibadan.